So we talked about indoctrination. Uh, once somebody has been indoctrinated into you and your brand, the next step is to engage them. All right, we want to engage them. So let's look a little more closely at the engagement phase. So really, the the role of part two, which is engagement, is to follow up with them and to talk to them about the thing that they said that they were interested in. So in other words, it's lead magnet centric. So whereas the indoctrination series was very brand centric, it was very, hi, I'm glad you're here. Here's what we're all about. Here's our best stuff. Check this out. Again, you're telling your best stories, your best anecdotes, your best jokes. You're putting your best foot forward. That's what indoctrination is all about. Engagement is all about them. Engagement is all about talking about the thing that they are interested in. Now that brings up a logical next question, which is, how do you know what they are interested in? And the answer is, you know it from the lead magnet that they opted into. So let's go all the way back to the module and the lessons on lead magnets. If you recall, the big point there, the big overarching theme of that was specificity, having a very, very, very specific lead magnet. So if I'm a golf instructor and I put out a lead magnet on how to break 90, then I can talk to these people about how to break 90. Or if I put out a lead magnet on how to drive the ball further, then I know that they want to learn how to drive the ball further. They're not maybe not into putting. Okay. So in all these things, the lead magnet, the topic of the lead magnet, in, it, it informs what you should be talking about in your engagement series. And that's how you craft an effective engagement series. That's how you craft an effective follow-up. That's how you know that you're talking about the thing that they're interested in. It's because they told you when they signed up for the lead magnet. But none of this works if you don't have a specific lead magnet. So hopefully this is bringing all this uh, full circle. Now, the important thing is that this is where the money is made, right? The, the money, you're not asking for the, for the sale in the indoctrination series. Again, that's first date, right? You're not asking for the order there, but once you get into the engagement series and now you're, they're saying, okay, yeah, I like that. I like that. I like that. Then that's where it's appropriate to ask for the sale. So if they do go over here and they, and they do buy, then I'll show you what, what happens there. But this is where the money is made. So we're not broadcasting out to our list haphazardly and asking them to buy stuff. You're going to see that's not how we handle it at all. In fact, we're only selling something to people when they first raise their hand and said, yeah, I'm interested in that. Tell me more. And it's this process of, of, in, of the engagement series that allows us to uh, make a lot more sales by, by actually emailing our list less often because we're only emailing the folks who are already engaged. And I'll show you later on how we do exactly that. Now, one of the big questions that everybody asks is, how long should my engagement series be? Well, I'm going to show you some examples of some engagement campaigns and series in, 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 some, in, in some of the next videos. But the long and short of it is, I didn't mean to say long and short in referring to that. That was not an intentional pun. Um, the basic idea of it is that the price of the product, the price of the thing that you're trying to sell in your engagement series, well, that's going to determine the length of the series. If you have a low dollar impulse buy offer, in other words, if you're trying to sell someone a tripwire, then maybe two, three, four, five days is all you need. Two, three, four, five emails. You know, maybe that's that's really all you need because at that point it's an impulse buy, right? If they're not interested, then they're not interested. Mailing them more often about trying to buy a pack of gum, they just don't want the gum. Okay. Now, if it's a mid-range offer, you know, a core offer, something that is a little bit more expensive, then yeah, maybe you know, five, seven, ten days might be appropriate. If it's a profit maximizer and 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 you really need to nurture that and 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 encourage them and move them along slowly, then you might be talking seven, you know. 10, 14, maybe 21 days. We typically though, as a general rule, do not have an engagement series go out longer than 30 days. And you're going to see why when we get to segmentation, but for the most part, we're talking to them about a particular topic, a particular topic, and we're asking them to take an action. If we've been talking to them about that topic for two, three, maybe even up to four weeks, and they still haven't taken the desired action, then they're probably just not as interested in the topic as we hoped they were. And the best thing that we can do is to stop talking about that and start talking about something else. Now, one of the examples of this is what we call gain logic fear. Gain logic fear is a, is a type of, uh, is a type of engagement series. It's an example that I'll actually show you along with some other ones uh, in the next video. So let's go to those right now.